So what we want to do now is we want to add an enemy that's going to follow our player. So what I'm going to do is I've got my spike ball here. I'm going to click on it, edit behaviors, and you'll see that it currently hasn't got any. On the event sheet, you'll see that also I've only got the is overlapping player, destroy the player. If player is destroyed, restart layout. So let's add some behaviors to our spike ball. So first one we need to do is we need to add a way for our spike ball to move. So if we're creating a platform game, then we'll select platform. For a top down game, we'll do eight directions. So we're gonna do our eight directions. And we do a couple of quick things first. We need to turn off default controls and we need to turn off the fact it can change angles. Just turn those off. That's our first step done. Now we need to add another behavior to our spike ball. Let's go down to behaviors. And we're going to add this one called line of sights. Just here. And press add. So that's our two behaviors set up. Now we go over to our event sheet. So what we're going to do first is check if the spike ball can actually see our player. So you don't want it to always come towards our player because that can be quite overwhelming, quite a big level. What we want it to do is only do it when it is close to our player. So we can choose our player for it to move across. So it has line of sight on object. And this zero just means that it's going to check for the center point of our image. So if it's got line of sight, what do we want it to do? Well, we want it to go after our player. So we first click on the spike ball and we go down and we do set angle towards position. Now that's gonna ask us for an X and Y position, and depending on what the X and Y position is, that's where our spike ball is gonna move. So currently zero, zero means that it's gonna to move towards the top corner of the screen. What we want it to do is we want it to move towards our player. So we're gonna go click on this find expressions, click on our player, and we're just gonna scroll down until we get to our player's X position. So we see, get the object's x coordinate and pixels. So click on that, press escape, and it adds it there. We can do the same for y, or we can just type it. So that find expressions can be quite handy if you're really not sure what to type there. So press done. So now our spike, if it's got line of sight, is gonna to face towards our player. What do we want it to do once it faces towards our player? Well, we want it to move towards our player. So there's a couple of ways that we can do this, but the one I'm gonna use is I'm gonna scroll down and so we've got this move forward option. We're going to move forward one pixel. Click done. So we can now press play. And you'll see that it's now moving towards us. If we get far enough away, hopefully we should be able to lose line of sight. So if we go diagonally, we go right into this corner. Unfortunately not, it's still following us. So what we need to do is go back to our layout and click on our spike ball and we need to actually change its line of sight. Currently it's set to 10,000 pixels. Now our current layout is only 1700 across so that's not very good. Let's make it 200. Our cone of view is a sort of cone that looks out in order to see. So it's looking at that. So 200 should be a bit more manageable. What we're also going to do is just add a wall that our player is going to hide behind at the start of the level just to show you that it is effect using a line of sight. So let's move our player there. And you'll see the spike's not moving. As soon as we peek behind the wall, we get a little bit closer. There we go, now it's moving. So I've set it far too low now, being only 200. And as soon as we lose line of sight, it stops.